It's the month of love. You find yourself the perfect partner. Oh, they're a 10 for sure. But they don't have NordVPN to protect themselves and their online data. Well, do you want to risk it? This video has been sponsored by NordVPN, an amazing virtual private network service that can unlock all sorts of content with just a simple click. All you really have to do is open up NordVPN, click on whatever country you'd like, and voila! Now you can watch any anime you want without region locking stopping you. With over 5,500 servers in 60 countries, you're safe to explore all sorts of streaming services from all around the world. And thanks to NordLinks, you won't have to worry about lagging or bandwidth issues at all. You can even use NordVPN on multiple platforms such as Windows, Android, iOS devices, and more. I'm still using it! Whether for streaming or just to protect myself, I've been using NordVPN for years, and I highly recommend them. Right now, NordVPN is celebrating their birthday, and they want to celebrate with all of you. If you use my special link and purchase any two-year plan, you will get an additional four months free with your purchase. You can either select the standard deal with NordVPN VPN alone, the plus deal which includes NordPass, or the complete deal which includes NordLocker too. No matter which package you choose, if you use my link, nordvpn.com slash animeamerica, you can get two years of service and an additional four months for free. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, and it's a wonderful service that I personally love to use. Again, just go to nordvpn.com slash animeamerica, or click on the link in the description box today. busy these past two months fighting off the summer heat and frustrated customers, I did my best to watch the rest of the 2023 anime just in time for the anime awards. But like every year, there's always that one anime that grabs my attention and makes me want to binge watch for one reason or another. And I don't know if it's because I was tired throughout the school holidays and just needed to turn off my brain for a while, or I just got swept away into this world, but yeah, I'm here to rant about a sugary girl power anime that's pretty over the top and you're gonna understand why. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Hey, no, 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 you get out of here. We're talking about this sugar anime, not that sugar anime. <clears throat> sugar Apple Fairy Tale started off as a light novel series written by Miri Mikawa, illustrated by Aki, and published by Katokawa Shoten around March 2010. After two different manga adaptations were released throughout the decade, an anime was finally produced and animated by JC Staff, the same studio that brought you Maid Boss, Gangsta Daddy, and Bruno. Cause we don't talk about this one. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale is based in a world where humans and fairies coexisted in harmony until a great war caused mankind to treat fairies like slaves. If a human is able to capture and keep one of the fairies' wings, they are forced to do whatever the human wants them to do or else suffer painful torture. Just what I expected from a show called Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, Agony! Some humans don't really follow this mindset like our main protagonist, Anne Halford. She dreams of creating a world where humans and fairies can coexist again and is working hard to become a silver sugar master, which is a high rank given by the royal family to sugar artisans like her with great talent. This right here is our childhood friend, Jonas! Lily be Rebecca! No. Yeah. More on him later. Anne is on her way to the capital in order to compete in the Royal Candy Fair, but wants to hire a bodyguard to protect her along the way. She stops at a nearby town to purchase a warrior fairy and... <laughs> oh, hello there. This is Shell. He's a fairy! Obviously, if you can tell that he is a fairy. Typical fairies are small, but uh, not this guy. He's special. And now another useless fact. When looking into this, Shao could honestly fall into the Fae category, which are Fae entities similar to Fairy Godmothers or Dark Fae like Maleficent. They may be tall, but they can still fall under the Fairy category. I am only bringing this up because Krim got robbed! Disclaimer, only horny people get that reference. <laughs> Anyways, Anne hires Shao to protect her, even though he insults her multiple times. Hey. Scarecrow, you haven't had your first kiss? What a child. Human beings are all the same. So I thought I'd find myself a stupid one. And in the last few years, 
You might be the most foolish human I've met by far. Oh, it looks like we got ourselves here a genuine bona fide certified Sundere King right here. Black Vegeta. From here on out, Anne makes her way to becoming a Silver Sugar Master despite facing a cruel world full of hardships, obstacles, and bitches. This show has plenty of them. So this here is another entry into the Bishoujo category geared towards women who would kill to be in Anne's shoes. Building up a career in a male-centric field, showing off your mad skills with salty men being jealous of your skills, and having a dreamy fairy king following you around even though he's acting like a sundere. But deep down, we're totally into it. Mostly I steer clear from shows like this, catering towards a certain demographic in very non-subtle fashion. The most basic examples I can offer are male-geared show centering a male protagonist down on his luck and just happens to be surrounded by gorgeous women, while female geared shows center around an upbeat female protagonist fighting some sort of systemic oppression while showing off to a bunch of hot guys that she's just as strong and capable. I can't really judge these too harshly since they're made to be catering and non-subtle in order to entertain individuals who yearn for these types of fantasies. I can find myself liking shows like this if there's something unique about the premise or characters. I mean, I never I never really liked Snow White with the red hair, but I did like Saint's Magic is Omnipotent. I'll go into a tangent if I had to explain the differences, but my point is this. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale is more like Snow White with the red hair, but in a campy and over-the-top way that entertained me more. Eh, what exactly do I mean by all of this? Well, <laughs> Here we go. Anne wants to be a silver sugar master and bring peace between humans and fairies. As long as she stays positive and works hard, her goals are pretty achievable. But she lives in a world surrounded by petty, obnoxious, self-centric asshats who want to see her put down into her place and stay out of their way. It's not that subtle, it's just flat out ridiculous. Like these guys will bully her, belittle her, steal from her, send hungry wolves towards her, blackmail her, spread lies about her, ruin her career by dipping her hands into hot molten sugar. Okay, fellas, you need to simmer down now. I simmer down now. Just simmer down now. The poor girl just wants to follow her dreams and these guys just gotta cry about it. And of course, the biggest crybaby out of all of them was not surprisingly Anne's childhood friend, Jonas. My God, I knew he was problematic from the very first millisecond he appeared. I know that you feel empty, but I will make you happy. In fact, I'll make you happier than your mother did. Seriously, he follows her without her consent, begging for her hand in marriage, but when she keeps declining him, the brat goes into full sore loser mode by stealing her art piece and nearly killing her with wolves. Duh, what would your baby got rejected and ejecting like a shy little bitch? Somebody got the big sad. He's a rich boy with major main character energy, believing he's entitled to get everything he wants, and when he doesn't get it, he turns into a bigger bitch than Kyle's mom. And just when you think you're done with him, he comes back, spreading lies about Anne and blackmailing her when it suits him. And just when you think he's gone after that instance, no, he's a persistent little cockroach doing everything he can to honor his name and embarrass Anne whenever he can. Top 10 anime bitches? Jonas is number one. So yeah, the men in this show tend to be very rude, obnoxious, petty, trashy, and extremely sexist towards Anne, which is only written to strengthen Anne's character, making us cheer for her, and secretly hope that Shell conveniently locks them all in a house and burn them all. Accidentally. So with how over the top the writing is and how it could literally make its own catering company with how it's written, what makes me like this show despite its campiness? I mean, I like the fairies. Not just Shell. But I do like me some shell. <laughs> You're not just rooting for Anne to succeed. You also hope the fairies get happier endings. Because of war, the fairies are treated unfairly and are used to mostly serve humans. Shao was born from a young child staring at obsidian and is made to fight and protect. He's a warrior fairy who's seen his fair share of cruelties by the hands of humans. Aside from the one girl he knew decades previously, he wanted nothing to do with humans until he met Anne. To him, she's a naive girl who will only be crushed by the sadistic world she's throwing herself into. But by 
by witnessing her talents and determination, Xiao finds himself wanting to protect the only positive thing he's seen in a long time. It's a bit cliche, but I can't help but like characters like this. They're cynical because of their own hardships, but start to feel some sort of hope return to them because of the influence of one person. And yes, this story with the Duke of Felix made me tear up a bit, and Jonas find themselves staying with a very abusive Duke who will give them everything they need to succeed in their field if they can give him an art piece he desires. Jonas flakes out like the little bitch he is, but hearing what the Duke went through and how much the art piece meant to him, he just can't help but feel emotional watching this arc. Definitely one of the saddest, yet most beautiful moments in anime. Overall, this is a campy bishoujo anime that makes you want your own fairy husband, though I mean what? It's another girl-centric show packed with girl boss energy and asshole men, but it's too cheesy to hate it. Besides, with a positive character like Anne, a sundere yet sweet partner like Shell, and with a sweet story like the Duke and Christina, I honestly find myself liking the show. Plus, the artwork and animation that goes into Anne's sugar sculptures are simply beautiful. So yeah, it's a cheesy story with good animation and some good voice acting. With all of that, I'd recommend it for anyone who just wants to turn off reality for a bit and enjoy some Jeez. Like I said in my Tribe 9 review, why judge a product for being over the top and extreme if that was their aim? It's not taking itself seriously, it's just a short story about a girl chasing her dreams surrounded by assholes trying to take her down, and she has fairy friends to help her out. To each their own, but this is one of my guilty pleasures now. If you're in the mood for some sugary sweet drama with fairies and love, you should check out Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Does immaturely insulting me make you feel better about your sad, single life? It actually does. I don't know how he sleeps more than me. I want to sleep that long. I want to sleep forever, too. I just want to sleep forever and never wake up. Okay, whoa! How about this one? I call it bold and brash. Your life belongs in the trash! I may not know my flowers, but I know a bitch when I see one! <laughs> Hello, little fairy. Are you going to tell me this is all a fantastical dream? Give me your skin! I was wondering if you're free for coffee. Oh, no, I can't. I've got a lunch meeting and then a meeting after lunch. After that, shh, shh, shh. Over the next 90 minutes, I'd like to show you that all your problems can be solved by my penis. Sly Raccoon, everyone. Ending lives and taking wives. You actually think I'd be cleaning bottles and listening to you fucks bitch and moan all the time if you wasn't forcing me? I like being forced. Keep that to yourself. If anything, I'm, I'm the one who should be getting paid because I'm the one going through emotional torment and suffering at the hands of you! I disagree with that. I, I disagree. Pay the damages to my soul and brain! Alright, well the value of it is what, five bucks? What did you expect fairies to do? I thought they did nice things, like like granting wishes. Huh? Shows what you know, don't it? What you currently have in your mouth is art! <laughs> Wanna know how much I love you? Wanna know how much I don't give a shit? Oh, oh little baby cry? Oh, oh no! Oh, you're gonna be all boo! Oh, do you have the big sad? Nobody will ever understand the torment I feel. The torment of an extremely attractive ninja who is lusted after by pretty much every girl he's ever met. Mine is indeed a tormented existence, filled with torment. And girls, girls with their breasts, they torment me so. I spill wine all on my... Dick. Their love is vile and blasphemous. Hot as fuck though. And now my question to you! Is there a show you know is campy and stupid, but you just love it anyway? What's your guilty pleasure anime? Let me know in the comments down below. I do want to say I'm sorry for the delay in videos. The summer holidays used to be more tolerable, but this year was a lot more demanding and tiring. Now that it's over, I can get back to work making awesome videos for you all, so stick around. Special thanks to my amazing Patreon supporters for keeping this channel alive. YouTube really doesn't like it when you take a break, so I appreciate you all sticking around to help me out. And of course, thank you to everyone for watching this video. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America.